Hello, my name is Jason Parker and welcome back to this channel about magic. In this video, I'm reacting to Ruben Villagrand, a magician from Spain. Now I've never heard of this guy before, but generally speaking, a lot of magicians from Spain are very good, especially if he comes from the Juan Tamariz school of magic. So I don't know what to expect and I have high expectations. Probably should cut that part out. All right, let's just go ahead and jump into the reaction. I'm Ruben Villagran and I come from Spain. I live in Europe. My audience speak uh, many languages because they came from many, many different countries. Myself, I speak English, French, and Spanish. But when you do a gag in English, the French people, they were like, eh? I don't get it. <laughs> and then the Spanish people were like... I don't want to use words because it breaks the rhythm of my show. So I start to mime my magic. And everybody can understand at the same time. By doing mime, my magic became really powerful. And I can perform all over the world in any language. Ow. For 10 years performing this trick, I fool every magician. But will I fool Penn and Teller? Who knows? <laughs> What is that? Ah, it's a can of food. <laughs> I was wondering. We got salt. Ah, so it's some fish, I guess. I'm sorry, did I miss something? Why was that funny? Why, why was the audience laughing? Was that just an applause cue that I missed because I wasn't there? Was the fish supposed to be too big to fit inside? Or was it funny just because he was wiggling it? Or did it have a little necklace? I feel like the camera should be more zoomed in or something so I'm not struggling to see what's happening. Back to the video. Sharp. Oh no, he's gonna eat that. It's like, yeah, I'm a professional, don't worry. Ooh. It's not a very nice image. <laughs> it's got more hooks where that came from. <laughs> That's how I feel. Down the hatch. I mean, sometimes magicians will eat razor blades and then pull them all out on a string. Maybe that's where he's going with this? I'm not sure. Haha! <laughs> He seems so uh, pleased, <laughs> like he's really enjoying it. That's funny. What else do you have in there? Uh, okay, so we are going with the string thing.
trick sort of like this is that extra pressure on you it is because he's performing this trick before I was born oh. <laughs> oh so did this trick take a long time to prepare actually yeah it took me a couple of years to create because the technique is totally new so it's new then maybe you will fool them <laughs> oh. all right shall we see if Penn and Teller swallow the hook all right, so although I have seen this razor blade on the string thing performed many times before, it's never actually been a trick that I've learned myself. You gotta realize, as a magician, there are tens of thousands of magic tricks you can select from when you're learning. And really, the only limitation is your time and your willingness. Uh, it did seem like he just, you know, we saw the end of the string, he put it into his mouth, and then when he pulled it out, the hooks were attached, you know? It's not like he took a piece of string and put the entire thing in his mouth and then pulled it back out because he could switch it for a different string. In this case, we see the same string coming in and going out. And uh, I've got to say, I'm confused and I don't know how he did that. The only thing I could try to guess at is like, maybe he already had a string with hooks in his mouth and somehow when this string went in and it attached onto the end of the other string and then it could be pulled back out. But I don't see how he would do that unless it was somehow like a super tiny magnet that just snapped off to the end of the other string. But even that uh, would be pretty difficult to manage, but that's just a guess and I could be 100% wrong. Could be 110% wrong. That's literally how wrong I could be. All right, let's hand this back over to Penn and Teller. That was great, that was great, man. You know, a lot of, as you know, a lot of great, great magicians have uh, done uh, the uh, East Indian trick of swallowing needles. Some of the greatest magicians in history, of course, Harry Houdini. And then if we want to build above Harry Houdini, tell her, uh, <laughs> swallow the needles. <laughs> but fish hooks is a really good idea. It also seems like you can't, um, you can't do the move with those that you did. <laughs> it really, uh, the way the geometry works makes it uh, much more deceptive with fish hooks. Not more deceptive than you, of course. I wouldn't say that, but more deceptive than other people doing the needles. That was great. So we know how the needles is done, and we can map that onto the fish hooks. Uh, now, this is part of this thing where the show gets rather esoteric, because what we care about is not what everybody else watching this show will care about. They care about, whoa, Ruben swallowed fish hooks, swallowed thread, brought the fish hooks up on the thread. Wow, that was something. And of course, that is something. But our problem is all with the thread. We thought swallowing the thread was the really hard part. There's a part there with the thread that does not fit in the way that we knew this is done normally. That was the part that blew our minds. And that made us think, what do you need to go fishing? Well, you need very unfashionable pants, <laughs> and you need boots, and then you need a rod and a reel. You need all those things to go fishing. And as soon as we thought about this with the fish hooks and fishing, we thought we might have a slight inkling as to how you did the part of the trick that blew our minds, which was how you took it right onto that reel of thread, the spool of thread. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess you didn't fool them, but you certainly entertained them. Thank, Thank you. you. Ruben Villagran. All right, well, that was a great performance by Ruben. I've got to say, he's very charismatic and it was enjoyable watching him. I also noticed during the performance, the audience was laughing a lot when I wasn't laughing. And I'm thinking, what's wrong with me? Am I not getting the jokes? Maybe it's just that I was so hyper-focused on trying to watch what he was doing that I was not so much paying attention to his comedic presentation. Now, as far as what Penn was saying, uh, speaking in code, and he was talking about a reel, in this case, I guess he's saying something like a reel of thread that has tension, so when you let go it gets pulled back but 
I don't really see how that would fit into how he got the hooks so cleanly onto the thread that he had just put into his mouth. Yeah, I mean, I'm just not seeing it. I don't get it. He definitely fooled me with that part. Well, actually, that was the entire trick, so he fooled me with his whole trick. Anyway, I really enjoyed his confident presentation. He seems to be a really great showman, and I would personally love to see this guy perform more. And I do like mime. Mmm. Again, great performance by Ruben. Go ahead and leave a comment below. What did you think of his performance? Did he fool you? Do you have any ideas what Pin was saying about the reel and how he accomplished the effect? Or did you just enjoy it on the presentation level? And if so, leave a comment saying that. And also smash like, maybe. And that brings us into the last bonus portion of this video. Feel free to stop watching now if you don't want to see this. I'm going to read you a short Aesop's fable. The Boy and the Nettles, chapter 68. This is literally a very short story. A boy was gathering berries from a hedge when his hand was stung by a nettle. Smarting with the pain, he ran to his mother and said to her between his sobs, I only touched it ever so lightly, mother. That's just why you got stung, my son, she said. If you had grasped it firmly, it wouldn't have hurt you in the least. Stupid son, I mean, come on. First off, what is a nettle? Isn't that like a little piece of a pine tree? Divine nettle. A herbaceous plant which has jagged leaves covered with stinging hairs. So not at all what I was describing. Ah, those are called needles, not nettles. That's the difference. Know your needles versus nettles. Don't embarrass yourself like I just did. All right, so she's saying, well, if you had uh, grasped it firmly, then you wouldn't have been hurt. Now, I am not an expert on nettles, obviously, but is that a thing? If you grab it firmly, then you're not gonna get hurt? I literally have no idea. I've never even seen or touched a nettle before, I guess. Maybe that's not a very common tree where I come from in Texas. Or I'm just an idiot. All right, so <laughs> is there a moral from this story, aside from some kind of education about plants? Well, I guess we could say that in some situations, if you're being too cautious and careful, things can actually go wrong, versus if you're confident and you just go fully into it. Again, don't know anything about nettles. But maybe if he hadn't been so worried, he could have just gone for it and... What was he trying to do with that tree? Ah, he was gathering berries from a hedge. Really am an idiot. Okay, no more idiot comments. That's hate speech. But yeah, in general, I could definitely see situations where if you're too worried, you're gonna make the situation worse. Sometimes you just gotta relax. So yeah, any other lessons we can learn from that story, feel free to share them with me. And that's it for this video. Remember to smash like. Don't forget about that. It's possibly the most important part. And I'm going to go ahead and film one more video right now. So I will see you next time.